Hi everyone, I'm Alexandre Darrow, a PhD student from the University of France, working for the Poly Project. Today, I will try to introduce you to a part of this project which aims to better understand the decline of bees in Europe. Because yes, several of these species, including crop pollinating species, are currently in decline. But not bees, for example, are a group of important pollinators, but almost one third of the species are declining. The reasons of this decline are quite well documented in Europe, indicating different factors such as the loss of habitats, parasites, pathogens, global warming, or agricultural intensification. Agricultural intensification has occurred most notably in the past 70 years with increasing demand for food and has relied on the introduction of productive crop varieties, intensive mechanization, and the use of various agrochemical products. In nature, bees have to deal simultaneously with different stressors. Here, at the University of France, we try to understand the impacts of the interaction between pesticides and nature. To survive, bees rely exclusively on floral resources. They use nectar to obtain carbohydrates and pollen to obtain proteins and lipids. However, the quality and quantity of these resources can be very different depending on the environment where the bees are foraging. For example, a bee foraging in the middle of a sunflower field may have fewer choices than a bee foraging in a more natural environment with greater plant diversity. With a good diet, a bee can survive longer, reproduce more efficiently, and be generally healthier. Agricultural landscape a good diet could therefore be helpful when dealing with different pesticides. To find out if nutrition could change the sensitivity of bees to pesticides, the Poshby project planned to determine good and bad diets for three different model species. The honeybee, Apis metifera, the buff-tail bumblebee, Bombus terrestris, and the mason bee, Osmia baconis. At most university, eight different diets were tested on one of these models, the buff-tailed bumblebee. To do so, we built microcolonies, which are groups of only five workers in a box without queen. A hierarchical system occurred quickly with a worker exerting his dominance on the others and laying haploid male eggs. For 28 days, several microcolonies were fed with the eight different diets. After 28 days, we measured the total resource consumption as well as the development of each microcolony by counting and weighting the eggs, larvae, and newly emerged adults. Once diet quality was assessed, the best and the worst diet were used to perform interaction experiments involving pesticides. Using the same experimental protocol, bees were exposed to different doses of either insecticides, fungicides, or herbicides and fed with either a good or a bad diet. To explain the obtained results, chemical composition of each pollen diet were analyzed. For each diet, the protein, lipid, amino acid, and sterile content was measured. The idea is to make a link between the chemical composition and the performances of bumblebees on each diet. In the case where a diet would reduce the sensitivity to pesticides, we could tell which type of composition would be favorable for resistance enhancement. If nutrition can influence the impact of pesticides, pesticides can also have an influence on nutrition. Foraging and food intake are relatively complex behaviors that require several cognitive abilities. One of the other objectives of the body project is to investigate whether pesticides, with some of them having a neurotoxic malfunction, can have an impact on these behaviors. To measure these impacts, we set up two experiments. In the first one, Bumblebees were chronically exposed to different doses of insecticides, fungicides, or herbicides during one week. After one week, the bumblebees were isolated and fasted for at least two hours. After two hours, each worker was placed in a cage with a capillary filled with sugar syrup. For five minutes, syrup consumption was monitored and the proboscis extension of the worker collecting the syrup was recorded with a camera. The proportion of feeding individuals, 
the amount of cereal consumed, the number of extensions and the amount of cereal consumed per extension was measured. Bumblebees were placed in automated boxes containing artificial flowers with a day-night cycle. A movement sensor inside the flower recorded the entry and exit of each bee, dispensing at each entry one microliter of syrup contaminated or not with pesticides. After one week of experiments, the flower visit frequency of each box was measured and compared with the different treatments. Combined, all these experiences provide a better assessment of bee health and enable appropriate decisions to be made to support the populations and sustainable pollinage. Thanks for watching, feel free to follow the Quantum Project on Twitter and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them. Bye!